There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can go, but I am sure of this one thing: that God is real. For I can feel Him deep within, and my God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real, for He has won. Whole and His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Some folks may doubt, some folks may scorn, and all can desert and leave me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's part. For God is real, and I can feel Him in my heart. And my God is real; He's real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. And His Love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away. But since that day, oh yes, since that hour, God has been real. For I can feel His holy power, and my God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed and made me whole, and His love for me. Is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. And oh, my God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. And His love for me is like pure gold. I said, My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempest all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mist has rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of the things that life demands: want of food and want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. We are trusting in the Lord, and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. Trials darken every 
hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God would lead us To that blessed promised land But He guides us with His eye And we'll follow till we die For we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by When the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by When the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by And we'll understand it better by and by We're on the battlefield for Jesus Come and join us in the fight We're marching against Satan And we're standing for what's right We won't desert nor surrender We are soldiers till we die We're on the battlefield for Jesus Victory is our battle cry We're on the battlefield for Jesus Come and join our happy throng We're blood-washed, born-again believers And we sing a joyful song King Jesus is our mighty captain And it's Him we shall obey We're on the battlefield for Jesus Winning souls for Christ today Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Come and join us in the fight. Though the enemy be all around us, we shall not be put to flight. By faith we know we have the victory, and no matter what the cost, we will fight to rescue hopeless sinners, not a soul must ever be lost. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever, He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is due Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. So, good morning, and I uh, hope you're all doing well. We're early this morning. I'm an hour early. I'm usually early anyway on Fridays. I'm usually at 11, but uh, this morning I'm at 10. I've got other things to do here today that um, are definitely keeping me busy and on my toes here all week. I've been 
kind of running around and doing a lot of different things, and God's allowed that, and that's okay. And and uh, but anyway, it's good to be here with you this morning, and I hope that you're awake this morning and ready to go. You know, um, and ready for some information here, some interesting information. Um, anyway, so. So, you know, I this BLM issue keeps coming up, and, and I know I've talked about it before. And a couple weeks ago, I, I talked about this, but I found this video, and honestly, this video, it... This video, it... Um, it really lays out a lot of what this group's about. Let me see here who's on here. Let me say hi to folks here. Uh, let's see. Peter's on here. Peter keeps changing his name. I don't... Now he's sort of the Spirit Ministries. I don't know. Maybe he just likes to change his name around. I don't know. Pilgrim Lady on there. Just Jeannie on there. Rachel. Joe McDonald. Andrea. Hope your pregnancy is going well, Andrea. And uh, let's see, Alex Ross. Brother Ross, hope you're doing well. Becca. Becca's on here. Carl Winters, of course. Mary. And let's see, Lisa, Lisa, hope you're doing well. Got your card in the mail with some interesting little pictures there. Um, Lisa's always got her eyes open for weird things. <laughs> she always has them. She always finds the weird stuff, but uh, uh, she fits right in here. We we always find those weird things too, don't we? Anyway, um, but. Uh, And my wife is on here. And then let's see, John Hippie. Oh, good. Your girls know every word to that song. That's good. That's good. I like to hear that. Good, good music. Good for the children to have good music, to be listening to it. It's wonderful. It's the best, one of the best things for their souls. Amen. All right. So, yep, Carl's here. All the weirdos. Yeah, that's you, Carl. Colin Anderson. First day of the season working with the cranberry bogs yesterday. I don't know what that is. Arms and back are really sore, but nice to get out of the house. I felt, uh, Peter said, I felt led to change my name. It was confusing to some other brethren on another live stream. Okay. And, um, Brother Joshua. So, good deal. Got about 40 people on here. Which is good. All right, good stuff here. Now, Friday, I guess you could almost call it Freaky Friday with these people, right? But um, not surprising. But we've talked about BLM before. Oh, yeah. Pastor Hoggard has COVID-19. I And his a lot of his other... There's five in the church that have it. So you pray for Pastor Hoggard and, and them now as they go through this. And he's pretty sick. I talked to him while well, texted him back and forth here the last couple days. 
I've been keeping in touch with them and and um, so he's pretty sick. He said he's as sick as he's ever been. And that guy's been sick before. So he's pretty sick. But I, I think he'll pull through. I think he'll be fine. The Lord protects him and and um Well, I don't care what you want to call it. He's sick. I don't I don't care if you want to call it the flu or you want to call it COVID or whatever you want to call it. He's sick. So, whatever. He's sick. He's got a virus. And he's very ill. So, I'm not going to get into all the specifics of that. I've talked about all that before. And I'm not going to get into it today. But that's that's what they diagnosed him with anyway. Yeah, I don't doubt any of that. I I hear you. I hear you. I know. You're preaching to the choir. I know. But anyway, um, I don't think he cares what it is. He's miserable. <laughs> so, so the most important thing we can do is pray for him. All right? That's the most important thing we can do, and um, is keep him in prayer. So we'll do that. We'll continue to do that. And um, his church, they're, they're pretty much shut down right now. They'll probably be shut down for a few days. Or a few weeks, I mean. I'm guessing a couple weeks they'll be shut down probably. You know? So... You know, we just have to keep praying for them at this time. That the Lord would be with them and and guide them through everything. And help them through everything. Yep, it's nasty. It, it's, it's not fun. So you pray for them. Now, with this BLM issue, um, I want to revisit this issue again. I found out a little bit more information about them that I think this video kind of reveals a little bit more. And she says in the video, maybe I'm revealing too much. But they're a bunch of witches. And I thought the Jehovah Witness connection was interesting. And I'm going to contrast that with a video that I did called a Watchtower of Witches. And I'll stop this 10-minute tape, you know, at different intervals and things like that. Because I want you to hear what's going on here. And I want to give you a grasp from the scriptures. You know? And it'll help you. It'll help you to understand what these people are all about. And then you, the reaction that you see from people out there, the mobs and the chanting and the fire and the burning and the burn it all down mentality, you'll understand where it's coming from. You'll get it. You'll get the demon because I'm seeing something that's different than any other election year. I've never seen this like this in an election year ever like this. Where there is just an increased amount of Satanic activity. And it is it is grown.
It is manifested into being bigger. I feel like in our in our tradition and our traditional practice and people who practice you know traditions from West African um, places uh, one of the big is remembering your ancestors and okay so she starts off by talking about remembering her ancestors now the type of remembrance that she is talking about is not like the Bible speaks of in stones of remembrance she is talking about the dead. She is talking about spirits. She isn't talking about a graveside remembrance or those kind of things. No, she's talking about spirits. I feel like part of the, the story uh, <clears throat> and the building of BLM was about remembering and, and remembering our people, not based off of a white supremacist memory, which would be about, you know, slandering them and putting their names in the newspaper and showing their mug shots. And, but in you mean like when they, you mean like when they commit crimes? You like like when they commit crimes, you know, and they and when they when they try to when they try to uh, burn things down, when they shoot and kill cops, when they kill people, and the truth is told about them. Right? Those kind of things. Instead, remembering them from the place that their mothers and their fathers and their family would want us to remember them, in, even if we didn't know them personally. And uh, I think that this, that, that, that part of our calling as people who do this work for black lives is- Part of our calling. See, these people are called by a spirit. Spirits. They're not lying to you. She's not making this up. Do you understand that? She's not making it up. This is what she believes. This is her practicing religion. It's a calling to her. It's a calling. She's not lying. She isn't making it up. She isn't putting on. She's not exaggerating. See, I believe her. I believe what she's saying. Do you understand that? I believe what she's saying. I don't doubt what she's saying. I think she's telling the truth. Most people don't pay attention to this. I do. You do. We pay attention. We hear what they're saying. To lift our people up a lot, both in their living, uh, but also in their death. And that the, 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 the need to lift our folks up feels um, so incredibly spirit driven for me. Okay. The need to lift my people up in their death. That's what she's saying. In their death. The need to lift them. What is she talking about? The dead. 
she's talking about the dead. That's who she's talking about. Right? But see, she doesn't understand what she... she Well, she might understand it. Others. Others that follow this don't understand it. Right? They don't know what's going on. Look at this. Proverbs 2.18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths of life. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and transgressors be rooted out. Now look at this. Proverbs 9, 18. Boy, isn't that interesting? This is talking about adultery. You, you can liken it to spiritual or physical. Stolen waters are sweet. Actually, let's back up. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there. And that her guests are in the depths of hell. They are the dead. And they are there. We do feel like when we say the names, right? So we speak their names. We say her name, say their names. We do that all the time. That you kind of invoke that spirit Full-scale admittance that BLM is a spiritual movement. It's a, it's a full-scale witness that BLM is invoking spirits. Do you guys see how easy it is going to be for the Antichrist to gather all of these zombies together under one banner? Do you understand that? How easily it's going to be for him. They don't care. It's not going to matter the color. Look, there's white people in Black Lives Matter. Do you understand that? There's black or there's white people that what does that show you? That they have the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. They have that spirit. That's what they have. And she's admitting it. Well, look, we invoke spirits. We just say their name. Only that's not who they're invoking. They're invoking devils. They're invoking fallen spirits. They're invoking gods. That's what they're doing. And they know they're doing it. You say, now listen, Pastor Cooley, you, you got to stop getting into Spookyville here. Because clearly that's not happen happening. Can you explain any other way that these people are absolutely whipped up into a frenzy, burn everything down. White people with their fist in the air, 
shouting BLM, repeating numbers, and white people that are part of BLM yelling at black people. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Right? Look, you got to understand something. The human players really don't matter that much. The human players, it, see, one thing Pastor Hoggard, I learned from him that really influenced me in a lot of ways was look past the human figures and look to the spirit that's behind it. Once you have that, then you can better understand the human figures that are there. You can better follow along and say, oh, well, that makes sense. You got to look past, because people say, look, there's no way 9-11 was an inside job. There's no way that it was planned. There's no way that these things can happen this way. Well, humanly speaking, you're right. Spiritually speaking, you're wrong. Because spirits are able to put things together that we are not. And they're able to direct soldiers together and to gather them into one spirit as the Holy Spirit gathers us into one spirit as believers. They're able, he's able to gather them all, the children, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience is well able to do it. And that's what you have to see. When you get to that point, you can understand that. Then all the other things line in place. And then those spirits actually become present with you, right? Okay. Like, she's not lying. She said, look, those spirits, they become present with you. They just do. They're there with you. Once you invoke them, they're with you. What did this verse say about the dead? But he knoweth not that the dead are there. The dead are there. The spirits are there. They're there with them. That's why I happen to believe when fornication, I think the Bible shows us here that when fornication takes place, there's devils all around it. When somebody's fornicating and they claim the name of Christ, even if they don't claim the name of Christ, but they're fornicating, God's not in that fornication, but the devils are there. The devils are there to afflict. The devils are there to encourage. In the end times, you're going to see that Deuteronomy 18 and 19. Well, chain break, I disagree. Many of them know exactly what they're messing with. The top line, those three witches, those three dykes, those three dykes know exactly what they're doing. They do know they're playing with devils. They do know it. The others are useful pawns and idiots that have no idea they're being taken advantage of. They have no idea why they're doing what they're doing. These people know what they're doing. I think it really illustrates what it is you're saying because we do that often. Some of 
Um, and maybe I'm sharing too much, but we become very intimate. Look at her smile. Oh, no. You're not sharing too much. You're just spreading our faith. You're spreading our witchcraft. You're spreading the spirit. And that makes me smile. See? That's what they're doing. With the spirits that we call on regularly, right? Like each of them seems to have a different presence and personality. <laughs> okay. Um, she's admitting it. She's like, they, they just have a different presence and a different personality. Each one of them, they're just different. Of course there are. There's millions of them. And some familiar spirit that attached itself to people like George Floyd. Those people... They act like that spirit. They act like Floyd. Right? That's what they do. That's the spirit that they push. And like the, the gods that ascended out of the earth took on the form of Samuel... That's what they're doing. Same thing. They're doing the same thing. Your Bible is right. And this King James Bible showed you that in the end times, these things would happen. And that we got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You know, when, if I was out running around or whatever and these mob of people came up and they were like, say your name. Say your name. And they're they, they like pressing me to say your name. I'd be like, no, but I'll say the name of Jesus. You bunch of wicked devils. I'll say the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll lift up the name of Christ. I'll start preaching the Bible to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's exactly what I would do. Or you try to get me, oh, chant Black Lives Matter. No, I'm not going to chant Black Lives Matter. I'm going to chant, without, without Christ, your life don't matter. Your life has no substance without Christ. You're just a bunch of creeps and losers without Jesus. Just like I was. And that is in my flesh dwelt no good thing. And that's black, purple, brown. I don't care what it is. That's what we shout to these people. I ain't shouting nothing you want me to shout. I'll shout what John the Baptist shouted. Repent ye, therefore, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, I laugh a lot with Waukesha. You know, I laugh a lot with Waukesha. Yeah, because she gives you a spirit of stupid. You know, I laugh a lot with Waukesha and I never knew her. I'm talking about her spirit. Yeah, because they gave you a silly spirit. Right? A stupefied, silly spirit. By the way, 
Let me show you something. Look. Which you now see and hear. They heard them speak in a tongue, but what did they see? For them to think they was drunk, they must have thought they was drunk. They were acting like drunks. <laughs> And this, my friends, is why the charismatic world hates yours truly. Because I show them you're nothing but a bunch of witches. That's all you are is a bunch of dirty, rotten, little, stinking, devil-filled witches. And, wait, here come the fowls of the air. Here comes Mr. Love and Mr. Jonathan somewhere. Whew. Going to swoop in here, bring their Jezebel spirit with them and hate the truth because they got the same effeminate, fornicating, perverted spirit. Amen. Come get me if you want me. That's what I say. I, that's what I say because I'm following the Lord and teaching the Bible. If you want some, come get some. That's the way it is. You'll have to go through the Lord first. I'm speaking the truth here, and I'm so tired of these stinking wicked devils out there that they hate when I bring the truth to them. They hate the fact that I bring that. Hey, don't be a devil. Then you don't have to worry about it. Get saved by the grace of God and follow the Lord. Then you won't have to worry about it. It's the way it is. <laughs> Come on, I'm not dumb. Look, watch. Have a different presence and personality. You know, I laugh a lot with Waikisha, you know. lot with Waikisha, you know, and mm -hmm. I didn't meet her in her body, right? Yeah. I met her through this work. Um, I didn't meet her in her body. Well, I hate to break it to you there, Lesbo, but you didn't meet her at all. You met some devil like these guys. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> There you go. Now, how, what I can't figure out is you have to have devils the size of Texas inside of your brain to disagree with what I'm showing you right here. They're saying the same thing. But I'm going to tell you why these little charismatic dudes don't like this. Because they got effeminate spirits. That's why they don't like it. They got that same Jezebel spirit about them. And they don't like that charismatic movement being compared to what they are. Witches. And let me just change this. Because I love it. I'm going to change this to the end of this too. And charismatic witches. There we go. That'll, that'll bring all the friends out. Right? Well, while we're on it, let me show you something else. Let me show you something else. Okay? This was at the White House a few days ago.
if this don't look like a bunch of witches gathering at the White House, I really don't know what does. I don't know what does. If this doesn't, I don't know what does. Do you? Help me out here, folks. Do you? And this is why people get mad at me. This is why I can't jump on the Trump train. Choo-choo! I can't do it. Trump! I, I can't. I'm not. The, I can't be that guy. Because I can't ignore this. I can't ignore it. Why are you yelling? Because you don't have nothing to yell about, you soft, effeminate little wimp. That's why. So I got to yell for you. That's why. Because you don't have enough spiritual fortitude to yell. You don't got nothing to yell about. I got something to yell about. Bunch of witches. Look, there's like nothing going on. There's no preaching going on. There's nothing edifying going on. It is just Babylon. Straight up babble. Straight up stupid witch babble. That's all it is. It's stupid witch babble. Babel, and I hate it so much. I absolutely hate it. I loathe it. I despise it. It smells like the manure that gets on my feet when I walk in a field somewhere. I absolutely 1000% hate it. I hate it with a passion. And if you don't like that, turn me off then because I don't care. But I hate it. Because it's babble and it's confusion. That's what it is. It's a stinking witch's seance. It's a bunch of stupid nonsense. That's all that it is. I'm telling you, that's all it is. Stupid witch nonsense. That's what it is. Babylon. I mean, so ridiculous. Of course lost people aren't mad. You're chanting the same stupid devils they are. <laughs> no, nothing. Sounds like an Islamic call. Prayer call. Same spirit. Hey, I'll show you another one. Oh, man, I'm on a roll today, man. I got to keep going. I just got to keep going. I got to find it. You got to give me a second. I'm getting fired up. Hang on. I'll find it. Hold on. I got to show you this. Man, I'm telling you. Here comes the weird. Are you ready? Hang on. I got to find it. Man, where's that at? I wonder if it's that one. Ah! Somebody found out I was going to use that video and set it to private. I know that was Satan. Stinking dirty rotten devil. Hang on. I wonder if I can find it somewhere. Let's see. Hang on a second. I got, I got to find this for you. You got to give me a second. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm going somewhere. You're going to see the same spirit. And I didn't even plan this this way, but this is the way it's working. See if I can find it. Watch, I probably won't be able to find it now. Wait a minute, I know what I did with that video. I put it, 
Hang on a second, guys. I know I sent that to Aaron. Let's see. Let me see if I can find that. I know it's here somewhere. All right, let's see. Give me a second, because, I mean, when I show you this, it's going to be like, it's going to fit right into it. No, it wasn't Monday. Would have been later than that. Let's see here. Oh, wow, I didn't even see that, that picture. I mean, I must have missed a lot of stuff. Okay, sorry. Here it is. I gotta show you this. Okay, this is Perry Noble, the charismatic stinking nut job, like literally wrapping in tongues some weird Cherokee stuff. Now, why am I showing you this? Because it's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. <laughs> Oh, Perry Stone. Did I say Perry Noble? I'm sorry. Perry Stone. Sorry. The wrong name. Look at him. Going into an epileptic stick and seizure. No, it's Cherokee. It's Indian. It's spirits. It all ties into this Babylon spirit of these witches, these BLM witches. Same spirit. Healers. Oh, healers. Oh, where are the healers? Where are the healers? Where are the healers? Of there's nothing better than geeky white people dancing on stage. Oh, there's nothing better. The I can't help it. I gotta make fun of them. I can't help it. It's like I'm Elijah. They're on the mountain, and I I just and they're they're trying to get their gods to do something, and they can't. And I'm just laughing my head off. That's what they are, and I can't help it. In your hands, healing in your hands, healing in your hands, healing. Look at. <laughs> Why do they all? Why do they have to have like the dancers up there? Like it's so stupid. I can't help it. Look at him. Look at that guy. Oh, look at that guy. That guy's great right there, man. Who are the guardians of the fire? Right. Let's go ahead. Look at, the, look at the Indian. It's like it's a bad episode of the WWE. I, I mean, <laughs> it just can't even be real. The beats are what's wicked with the music. I mean, all of it. It sounds like an Indian demon speaking. That's what it sounds like. The new to be saved. I, I armies of the tribe. The armies of the tribe of Judah. What does this have? Okay, let me ask you a question. What does any of this have to do with the Bible? The answer is nothing. The answer is this guy is a witch. Look at all of them. Look.
They just keep playing the same beats over and over again. That's what they keep playing. Because they were heathen. This guy's rebuking him. The same. And then he goes on to say, like, where are the dancers? The very ones that are going to per You know? It's pretty weird. Look at these. Okay, so there you go. All right. Let's get back to this video. I know that beat and everything just disrupts you. I know. I know. And it's like war marching music with it. You know, so that's what it is. Anyway, let's get back to it. Um, so I just want you to kind of speak to that a little bit if you can. Yeah, I mean, I'm, um, you know, I was always someone who almost obsessed about our ancestors, black ancestors in particular. Um, I wasn't raised with honoring ancestors necessarily. I was raised Jehovah's Witness. Okay, let's stop there. Because now you're going to start to see. Remember, we've talked about this before. Jehovah's Witnesses and those other places, they are, definitely, they are definitely places that teach familiar spirits and walking with familiar spirits and all that kind of stuff. Chapter 4. I didn't realize I had done that many, but I did. Six messages in the Mormon series. This, this one will probably at least have anywhere from five to eight. I don't know how many yet, but it's going to have a lot uh, because there's a lot to cover for the Lord. Now, where does it say the Bible that you're supposed to take your doctrine from the angels of the Lord? Anyway, period. doesn't say that ever, right? The remnant do not hear audible sounds because such is not necessary. Jehovah has provided his own good way to convey thoughts to the minds of his anointed ones. Anointed with what? There's a false anointing. There's a satanic one. Jehovah would employ his power through his angels to put in the minds of his servants to take the course that he would have them to take. So what does the Bible say? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. So the Bible said, God tells us in his word that this perfects a man. This is what guides the man. This book, this King James Bible, that's what guides a man into all truth. Not, not doctrines of devils, not seducing spirits, not thoughts implanted into your mind telepathically. Right. Those are devils. Right. God put it in the minds of his people to declare what constitutes Satan's organization to serve notice upon each branch thereof. Jehovah directs his own work, though we hear no audible voice. That's what happened to him. Of course it is. That's how he knows. Nowhere in the Bible. And that comes from Satan. That's not biblical Christianity. Rutherford speaks with a forked tongue, though. He was a devil that spoke with a forked tongue. He said, as Satan, that old serpent is the arch deceiver. Also, all his wicked angels are deceivers, and the undisputed evidence shows that they continue to deceive men. They operate by gaining control of the mind of man. Well, that's what happened to him. Of course it is. That's how he knows. Nowhere in the Bible are we told that angels download messages to our brains. Right? We just talked about that earlier. Nowhere are we told that, well, you're just sitting there and then the course of action you're supposed to take. Could you imagine if you and I had to wait to serve God, if we had to wait to get a message from heaven instead of this book that is already given to us, which is God's completed word, to give to us, to, have, to, to guide us into all truth. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which we're going to get to. Okay? But what happens, what, what's being said here, though, is that, no, it, it comes to my mind. Well, that's witchcraft. That's, that's consulting with familiar spirits. 
That's not the Bible. That's not what God commanded us. We have a more sure word of prophecy. We have the word of God. We don't need to wait for angels to try to talk to us or implant things into our minds. So you see what I mean? They were taught that the, isn't it uh, the angel Moroni? I think that's what it was. Or is that Mormon? No, it's Mormonism. Sorry. That's the, that's the, the golden ticket, right? The golden, yeah. But uh, I can't remember. These were two angels, I think. Anyway, I, I don't remember right now. Peter, I, I taught that through that series. Yeah, it's all in here, where everything came from. So it's a very thorough series, and it covers all of that. A little bit opposite of that. <laughs> um, and as I got older and started to feel uh, and like I was missing something, ancestor ancestral um, worship became really important. And as you know, the ancestral worship became very important. See, that's because it, it all kind of started. It all kind of started with the way the Watchtower teaches. That's where it started. Fowler Museum is so important because it has um, it has a bunch of West African traditional um, pieces inside that museum, and it was one of the first museums that I went to that was speaking directly to African spirituality. So, for me, see, I'll be honest with you, and I'll say this to you: there, Africans, Africa's own people, the Africans' own people, sold them into slavery. They sold them to white men into slavery. With that came the African tribal religions that were sorcery and witchcraft. Pop culture. Pop culture is a direct curse in America. From the sin of slavery, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe pop culture came to America through African tribal religions. So did their spirits. So did their spirit worship. So did their false witchcraft voodoo worship. All of that came as a result of bringing Africans over to America. That's where it comes from. That's the history of it. That's the spirit it's of. And that's why it's here. And that's why it's been a blight on America. That bringing in of that culture here to basically more white Europeans and settlements of people like that, what did it do? It just infused it in there. It infused it in there. Me, the, as we started to lift up the names of our folks um, in the last seven years, you know, in some ways, you know, even before Trayvon with Oscar Grant, um, I started to feel personally connected and responsible and accountable to them. So she's saying she felt personally accountable to dead people. So in other words, what she's telling you is she's being led by doctrines of devils.
Now the spirit speaketh expressly the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. She is telling you She's telling you what spirit she has. Children of disobedience is three times in the King James Bible. It's a contrast. And you, at the quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay? Ephesians 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Colossians 3, 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which also you walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. See, she's telling you what spirit she has in her. She's telling you who she's behoven to. She's telling her who has bewitched her. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? She's bewitched by them. Um, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place. And um, always, you know, in, our, in, in my tradition, you offer things that, that your loved one who passed away would want, you know, um, whether it's like honey or tobacco. Or things. Okay, okay, stop. Now I want to show you something in the scriptures here. Look what it says here. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. They are offering... They are offering to devils. Let's see. Give me a second. Let's see. Let me see here. Uh, what's the Bible say? And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. That's what they're doing. Deuteronomy 32. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, who's, who's your, whom your fathers feared not. See, they're offering it to devils. She's admitting that she's setting an offering up. She's admitting it. That that's what she's doing. Same thing.
things like that. And that's, it's so important, not just for us to be in direct relationship to our people who've passed, but also for them to re know they we, we've remembered them. Um, I, I believe so many of them work through us, but it's, it's a, it's a very important practice. Um, Did you hear what she said? I believe that so many of them work through, have worked through us. So she's, she's talking about spirits, right? She's talking about spirits that have worked through them. What are those spirits? Are they the people? No, they're the devils. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. That's who's working through them. Let's see, they smile. Oh, it's great. Hashtags are for us are way more than a hashtag. It is um, literally almost resurrecting a spirit so they can work through us to get the work that we need to get done. Okay. So she says when she does hashtags, it's summoning up those spirits. What is that? It's a spell. So all these people that are re- uh, posting hashtag Black Lives Matter or hashtag Say Her Name, or they're invoking spirits. They're drumming up spirits. That's what they're doing. They're, they're invoking spirits. She just said it. When we do the hashtags, it's spiritual. We don't mean it by the way others do. They just want to... No, we're, we're using it to invoke their spirits to get them to do something for us. Mm -hmm. Why do you think all these movie stars, football players... are reposting them. They're spells. They're literally reposting spells. Yeah. They're, she's admitting it. These are our spells. This is how we work. This is how we work our mojo. Right? That's just what they're doing. That's how they operate. She's telling you her procedure. So if you know anybody that's jumped on board this bandwagon, send them this broadcast and tell them also, Congratulations, you've been a part of a seance. Because you're pushing the same spirit. You're working their mojo for them. And don't take that from a Baptist preacher. Take, them, take it out of the mouth of dykes. Devilish dykes. Take it out of their mouths. Because that's who said it.
That's who said it right there. That's who believes it. Right. And we want to invite people, since you brought up more than a hashtag, we want to invite people to follow that Instagram page, um, more than a hashtag LA, where we try and tell the life stories of those who've been stolen from us, right? More than a follow it. Why? Because they need power. They need power to follow. They, they need followers. The more the gathering, right? The more the gathering of those spirits and witches come together, the more power they have. That's the gathering. Mm -hmm. That um, oftentimes, and Patrice says this all the time, that there's such a focus on black death, we have to also uplift black life. And so I think that when we call the names, um, you said something important that, you said a lot of things important, but you said something important about remembering them and I also feel that even beyond remembering them, we're invoking them, right? We're not just remembering them. We're invoking them. She's being honest. That's what she's doing. She's just being honest. Yeah, she said, we're not remembering, we're invoking them. We're calling up these spirits. Well, folks, let me ask you a question. Well, hold on. Let's just, let's just look at it here. Let's see. Uh... This one might be good. I mean, good as far as showing you the example, not good as in what's happening. This is after they found out that Breonna Taylor's, uh, the cops, didn't get arrested or didn't get charged. So... How else do you get people to do this unless you invoke spirits? By the way, they caught a cop on fire in this. Hey, recognize that beat? And they want to charge this dude for it. Get out of the stupid street, you morons. You don't get to block the street off. You don't get to do that. Yeah, look, so, that, so then they get to surround people and you just got to take that. The little devilish spirits, you got to just take that. You just happen to turn down the wrong stinking road and you're in the middle of a bunch of devil-possessed freaks that that, that want to just commandeer your vehicle, scare you half to death, and beat on your doors.
you know what? There's going to be some people that aren't going to take that. Because I guarantee if I was in that place and you were banging on my doors and I feared for my life, I'm stepping on the gas and I'm getting out of there because you ain't killing me like that. I ain't dumb. I'm moving. I ain't sitting there letting you kill me. I ain't going to let you kill my family. I'm not going to let you do that to me, bang on my door, block my windows up, and shoot me and kill me like that. I got a big bullet. It's called a big car. It's a big bullet. Boom. Boom. I'll see you around. That's just life, friend. I'm talking about if your life is in danger and your family and your children and these people are beating on your doors and they won't get out of the road. Well, if you're stuck on stupid, then you're stuck on stupid. It's not anybody's fault but yours. Look what they're doing to this guy. Why? Well, she just told you why. They're summing up devils. And what did the lives of these people stand for? Death. Death. That's what they stand for. Death. Now, I'm not talking about going out and looking for trouble, friend. I don't do that. It usually tends to find me no matter where I'm at. But I'm telling you, that's their invoking of spirits. This is the result. Look. Look. Oh, let me just break your car. Oh, let me just break into everything. Taylor. 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 See, they're invoking the spirits. They're, they're invoking the spirits, aren't they? Isn't that what they're doing? Say your name. Right? Say your name. What are they doing? Remember, they're all shouting this seance. They're all saying the name. Look. Taylor! Say her name! Brianna Taylor! No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! No peace! On street, on street! Oh, Show me the fuck of sleep! On street, on street! respect me as a black woman will quit running your mouth like a stinking heathen and maybe somebody will you know i'm so sick and tired of people like lebron james i'm so sick and tired the black woman is the most disrespected woman in the world i agree and it's by you guys it's by you guys it ain't by me it's by you guys you black men disrespect them. You knock them up and get them pregnant, and then you leave them with babies. You're the most disrespectful people to black women that ever walked the face of the earth. Don't blame me for it. I haven't impregnated any black women and left them with a bunch of children. And watched them sleep with a bunch of other men and have ten different children with them. Ten different daddies and not knowing who their daddy is and you not being man enough to stay around. Now that's real, ain't it? That'll get me kicked off of every place and make everybody mad. But that's real life there. 
tell me that's the problem. It ain't me going into those neighborhoods impregnating those women and, get, and, and having them have babies and walking away and not mother them or not fathering them. How about that? How about you talk about that, LeBron James, as you sit with your hundreds of millions of dollars that you have because you live in America. I don't see you racing out to go to some third world country and live there the rest of your life because America is so bad. America's so bad, but it ain't why you think it is. How about that? You can like it or lump it. I get paid the same. I really don't care. I'm so sick and tired of these of these liars out there. Pampering these people. Pampering them. Pampering them in their sin. Pampering them in their in their wickedness. Yeah, these rappers have sang songs. They they've sung these sang. They've sung these songs for years. Calling their women bitches and calling them hoes. End quote. Right? having them dance like a bunch of naked whores in their videos, mocking them, making fun of them, calling them names. It's just a bunch of truth is all it is. But then you're going to say, well, it's a white man. It's, it's, it's black women are so mistreated in America. Well, if they are, it's by you, first and foremost. And that's just the truth. And I'll tell you what, secondly, in my life, in my days before I was saved, I've been around a lot. Uh, I've been around a few black women. I'm going to tell you what. If you want respect, you act respectful. And don't let yourself be used like a trash can by some guy. And I ain't condoning men either. I just picked on them, remember? I'm just telling you. That's just the truth. That's the way it is. But you'll never hear people say that. Well, I'm a preacher. I'm not a politician. So I really don't care if you like it. That doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. I've been out on the street preaching before. And by the way, I've been <laughs> in situations. You know who starts most of the fights? If a black woman's around like that, there's going to be a fight for the most part. When, when, when you get them together in groups like that and, and you got a bunch of guys, they're going to start a fight. That's just the way it is. I was out on the street uh, three weeks ago and this black woman was doing her best and God didn't let her do it. God didn't let that wicked, loudmouth woman do it. But you know what she wanted to do? Get a good race war going. She wanted to get us so fired up that a white guy would say something wrong to her so we could have a beat down right there. I'm telling you, I, and I've seen that more than once.
I see it in a junior church with a bunch of kids. We picked up a bunch of kids from the inner city of Minneapolis years ago when I was part of another church. Picked all those kids up in junior church. What happened? These two black girls got these got these black guys going, got this room full of black guys going, got them fighting by running their mouth. Mm-hmm. Tell me I know what I'm talking about. I've seen it. I've seen it. And you don't have to like it. You can call it racist. You can call it whatever. I really don't care. I don't care. I've been called everything in the book. It don't matter. Just add one to it. I'm just, I'm telling you the truth. I've seen it with my own eyes. By the way, I'm not saying every black woman either. I'm just telling you, this group that's like this, that's the way they are. Okay, so that's just one riot, right? That's just one. And in Portland, police arrested 13 people and declared a riot overnight. And Melody Gonzalez shows us new video of how the protests developed. Here at the Central Police Precinct, you can see the damage from overnight. Police say that a late night protest, people broke windows, lit fire. That's not protesting. That's rioting and that's warring. But where are they getting it from? Right here. Right. So this is an invocation, right? This is a recognition that we always say things like justice for Riddell Jones or justice for Ahmaud Arbery or justice for George Floyd. But we can't get justice for them. Justice would mean that they're still here, right? Really? Because... The reports that I've seen, I think he was shoving fentanyl up his anus. So, and he was not cooperating with the police, and he didn't get killed by a knee on his neck. Okay? I hate to break it to you. He didn't get killed by that. He OD'd on fentanyl, and he could—he said he couldn't breathe when he was in the car. Before he was on the ground. Why couldn't he? Because he OD'd, and he had a heart attack. And unfortunately, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. That's the truth. I don't care what color you are. And you know how many times cops get lied to about, oh, I can't breathe. Well, he kept fighting like he could breathe. He sure was fighting like he could breathe. But what's happened as we invoke these names is um, they've really empowered and inspired the movement. Look at the way. Okay, so spirits inspire, right? Let me show you. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Okay, now. Now. God's spirit inspired. They have the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. They're inspired, inspired by devils. That's who inspired. Just like I showed you, remember this? Angels have manifested or came in a dream and delivered audible messages from the Lord. That's true. Turn to Luke. Well, look at that. But that's not what's being, that's not what Rutherford is talking about here. In Luke chapter 1, verse number 9. According to the custom of the priest's office, and the lot was to burn incense. Okay, so that's the right way. Let's show you the Joseph. wrong way. Matthew chapter, inaudibly messages are planted into your brain. 
Then all of a sudden we have those. No. The Bible clearly shows us that the Holy Ghost has a ministry. I want you to turn to John chapter 14. And then I teach you on what his ministry is. But look at this. Rutherford was led by spirits, not the Holy Spirit. Right? Rutherford had spirits telling him something. You know why we have a more sure word of prophecy today than the voice the Bible says? Watch this. What do they have? They hear a voice. They hear a voice. They get automatic writing. That's what they get. See, I don't need that today. I don't need anything else because I already have the written word of God. I have a more sure word of prophecy than the voice that they heard from heaven, Peter said. You have a more sure word of prophecy that you take heed to. They have spirits that inspire them that the invocation of George Floyd's name has cracked the entire world open. That we're yes. now, like you and I have been talking for the last couple of weeks. Like, So they're saying that George Floyd, what they're really saying to you is that George Floyd was a satanic sacrifice. That he was a satanic sacrifice, right? And that that was the way that they busted this whole thing open. That's the way they busted all this rioting open. That's the way they busted this satanic revival open. Where these spirits come up. Lawlessness. this is it like this is this is the opening up of everything right? this is it this is what we've been waiting for the devils to rise up and manifest up and start to work see they're admitting it they're admitting what spirits lead them They're admitting it. It's happening right before their eye, right before your eyes. Right? And these people have been trying to get it for years. Look at him way back in. Oh, geeky white people dancing. That'll bring devils for sure. Oh, old white people. Turn into some crazy devil-possessed Indian. Oh, I'm 60, 75 years old, and I'm dancing around like a moron. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Well, we can't forget about this now, can we? We really can't. Should bring this into it. If we open it up, it's gonna ooze, and if we open it up, it's gonna leak, and if we open it up, it's gonna smell, and we open it up, it's gonna hurt, but if we don't open it up, 
if we don't open it up, it won't get better. It won't get better, it'll just stay bitter. And if it stays bitter, it won't get better. It'll stay bitter. It'll stay bitter and resentful and angry because nobody told you it was going to be like this. Man, nobody told you you can't sleep with a stripper. What's the matter with you? Why didn't they tell you that? I mean, to think that a guy can't be a pastor and sleep with a stripper. What's up with that? And I don't even want to open this up in public because I know how deep it is. But the Lord, while the anointing is passing by, there's too much anointing in this room <laughs> to minister to everybody else and leave you sitting over there festering. Man, you can't fester like a zit. But that anointing's got to ooh. Really what TD is saying is he has the spirit of zit popping. Do you understand that? He has the spirit of popping zits. That's the anointing of popping zits. He is the anointed zit popper. Right? That's what he's trying to tell you. I wish you people would listen better. And festering and festering and festering, especially, you said it in a joking way, but especially when the spirit of suicide hangs around your house. Hit him, TD. Hit him right upside his biscuit head. Hit him! Trying to get you back. did it there it goes it's over he called it out you're done that's what she's doing she's calling it out too she said it's opening it up it's oozing right this is people are getting that you can't reform a policing system that stole the lives of our ancestors right you can't reform a policing system that literally comes from chattel slavery and it's the invocation it's the invocation of devils that are going to get them to get the victory over that spirit of slavery. I'll show you something here. I think it's here. Here it is. Ah, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through the much of wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought into bondage. That's them. That's them. All Satan's doing is enslaving them even deeper, even greater. That's what he's doing. Of George Floyd's name and Bre Breonna Taylor's name and the 608 folks who've been killed in LA County in the last seven years. It's the invocation of their names that goes beyond remembering them, but also in our tradition, when we call out our ancestors, we call them out for specific purposes, right? And so we say like, I wonder who, well, I don't wonder because we actually witnessed a bit of who he was. Um, who is George Floyd or Big Floyd as they- Okay. Who is Big Floyd? Well, Big Floyd was a dude that kicked a girl's apartment door in, took a gun and stuck it to her pregnant belly and said he was going to blow it off. That's the spirit of George Floyd. Okay? That's, I wonder who he is. Well, let me show you. Okay, here we go. So what spirit does that invoke? I mean, what's the spirit? We know how Big Floyd was. We know how Big Floyd was. Let's see how Big Floyd was. Minneapolis today, with its charred remnants of last night's rioting, the fury evident at every corner. Overnight, demonstrators had rampaged. The violence 
the anger and the flames, at times well out of control, continued until dawn. And throughout, loot. Wait! Is that Big Floyd? Nah. That's Big Floyd. That's Big Floyd's familiar. This is Big Floyd's familiar. Why do you say that? Well, he kicked a lady's door and robbed her, stuck a gun to her head, and threatened to kill her baby. What are these guys doing? Kicking doors in, stealing, robbing, looting stuff, taking off with it, and burning the place down. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Bro. That's the invoked spirit of Big Floyd. Oh, you might not like that. There you go. We're calling him. And as you heard about, like, how tremendous this man was, then you understand why the world is now cracking open, right? Yeah. And it took almost a year for me to realize that this movement is much more than a racial and social justice movement. At its core, it's a spiritual movement. Right. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yes, someone did die in the fire. Yep. That's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Because we're literally standing on spilled blood, right? Yeah. And you can't pretend like that's work that's just like some organizing work. So she's saying we're literally standing on an altar of spilled blood. Do you see? Those are spiritual sacrifices for them. That's what they are. That's what they're doing. That's, you know, that's some serious stuff, right? Was there a moment for you where you recognized that, And I know you always had the spiritual practice. I remember like when we first started, I remember us going to the ocean and doing these um, rituals and really feeding our spirit. But I don't. I remember going to the ocean and doing these rituals. Now remember, homosexuality, lesbians, so they're all connected to the occult. I've proved that. Go back. The occultism of homosexuality or something like that. Go back and listen to that. I've already proved that. But they're literally going to the ocean. Right? Right? They're doing seances. They're doing ceremonies. They're invoking the dead. They're drumming up spirits, and they've been doing it for a long time, and finally, they broke something open. They're not lying. They broke something open. I don't remember it being so deeply embedded in all that we did in 2013, as opposed mm -hmm. to where we came in 2014. Was there a moment for you where you realized, wait a minute, this is all one thing? Yes. Um, Pre-BLM, uh, I remember when I was um, uh, and doing an organizing training um, for a year in 20, maybe 20, that 2005 to 2006. And one thing that I felt was incredibly vacant was the conversation on spirituality and our movements. And it confused me because I was like, how am I not talking about spirit and spirituality? Um, and I actually co-wrote co with a few of us um, um, around the spirituality question. Um, and is there is there room in 
and our movements for spirituality. So I was already very much interested. And not is there room for the Bible, not is there room for Christ, not is there room for the truth of the scriptures, but is there room for spirits? Well, yeah, it's the entire foundation of what you do. You're entirely rebellious to God. You're absolutely 1,000% in rebellion to God. So your spirituality, it's everything you do. It's everything you stand for. That conversation, I think when we developed BLM, um, it crystallized for me. And I think we all also knew that we needed more spiritual protection as we started to be more targeted um, right. by lots of things, by the right, by police, uh, you know, by neo-Nazis. Um, so hang on, let's I, back up what she knew said that we needed more spiritual protection. She's saying we needed more spiritual protection. So we started calling on these devils and doing more ceremonies. She's admitting her spiritual protection, her protection comes from spirits. And you know, here's the thing. Okay. Let me explain something to you. Because this is what's bothered me, and it finally just clicked with me. I'm like, why are they letting these people get away with all this? Like, why are they able to do all this, and nobody stops them? They just keep burning places down. They burnt Minneapolis down. They burnt these places down. Now it clicks. They have spirits helping them and backing off those others from doing anything about it. That's how. They have spirits helping them, protecting them. And the mayors, the governors, the rulers are led by that same Antichrist spirit. So though they have a different flavor of it, they're helping these people do what they're doing. And I'm telling you the reason why. Because Trump's going to win the election and he's going straight to the hardcore right. And push statism, fascism, policism. They're going to beg for protection from the government. And out of chaos comes order. And that's why it's happening. That's the reason why. Because these spirits are protecting them. That's why they're able to get away with it. As we started to be more targeted um, right. by lots of things, by the right, by police, um, you know, by neo-Nazis. Um, so I, I feel like it, it's, you know, my, my homegirl, Heba Farag, um, who works out of the USC, I don't know what it's, I don't know what the center called, but for religious center, I, don't, I forget. But she just, she wrote an article years ago about the spirituality inside of our movement. She just recently wrote another one um, that I'll make sure to send to folks. And uh, she, it was just like, the, the title is basically like, uh, spirituality is at the center of Black Lives Matter. Um, and I, I read through that article last night. There's not a whole lot extra. right that the article says i didn't really pick up a ton extra in it but there's some things in there that are kind of interesting in that article from what i remember we're not gonna have time to go through it because i'm about out of time i can't believe it see it takes me two hours to get through a 10 minute video that's what happens and i think that's not just for us i feel like so many um leaders and so many organizers um are deeply engaged in, in a pretty um, important spiritual practice. I don't think I could I could do this work without that. I don't. So I can't do this work without the devils. Right? 
I don't think I could do this work without the devils. That's what she's saying. You know, one of the strengths of this ministry is that I have tried always just to use their own words. And if you learn use their own words, they tell you everything you need to know if you just listen. They tell you everything you need to know. And now it finally clicks with me. Just now, even during this broadcast, it finally clicked with me. Because I'm like, why are they getting away with this? How do they keep doing this? Sometimes I'm a slow learner. But it just, and I haven't really focused on it that much. But now I did. It just, the Lord just gave it to me. Well, this is why. They're being protected by devils. They're being allowed to do this by devils. Devils are empowering them. Devils are leading politicians. Look, one thing I've learned is that we can be attacked by the devil with this spirit of passivity. Remember when I talked about Remember when I talked about on Monday, the broadcast on Monday, I talked about brethren that don't battle spiritual warfare and, and soldiers that stay off the line and they become passive. Remember that? Right? They become extremely passive. Well... That's what it is. And Satan pushes this spirit of passivity. And with the lost, he can do whatever he wants. He floats in and out, does whatever he wants. And see, with these guys, with us Christians, when we get attacked with that type of thing, that we got to fight that. We got to fight it. Those temptations not to do anything, not to stand up, not to battle, not to do what's right. Okay? But there's a spirit over everyone of delusion, deception, and passivity. And that's what's going on. That's where we're at. And that's why it's being allowed. Because it's going to change. After the election, that passivity is going to change. And then kind of a rod of iron is going to come down, I believe. I don't think I could do it as long as I've done it. And as consistently, um, it feels like... If I didn't do that, it would be antithetical to this work. So they're admitting. They're admitting. They're admitting this is what they're doing. Now we understand that it's the spirit of confusion. And it all goes back, really, to COVID-19. Because COVID-19 was the beginning of the confusion. You had these spirits locked up, these people locked up, and these spirits, they weren't locked up, but the spirits were being conjured during this time and preparing. And it was only a matter of time before this thing blew up. And it blew up as soon as the lockdowns were over. That's when it blew up. And they were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do, and nobody stopped them. Meanwhile, the difference was... And I don't have time to get into this. Maybe we'll do it Monday. But there's another side to this. They're trying to lock up the churches while they let these spirits roam free. That's what's going on. That's what's happened. That's what's happened. So, anyway... All right, everybody.
Well, I'm about done here. I got five minutes and I got to get out of here. I got a lot of work to do. I can't believe how much I've got done already this morning. Went for a good prayer walk and prayed and and uh, uh, walked two and a half miles almost and did some praying and got back here, uh, did my devotions this morning, talked to somebody, talked to my cousin this morning and tried to be an encouragement to him. By the way, pray for him. His name's Harvey. He has cancer. Pray for Harvey. He, he says that he's a born-again Christian, so pray for Harvey, if you would, please. So, but uh, be in prayer for him and be in prayer for our church. Uh, God's moving. We're seeing people get right with God and we're seeing people uh, saved. We had one person uh, make a profession of faith on Wednesday night and we've seen people baptized and joining the church over the last few months. So God's blessed there and openly shown his blessings. Amen. So... Thank you for those that have sent money in to support the ministry and support the work that we're doing here. I appreciate it. I'm so grateful for that. If you want to, you can send it to salvationpreacher at gmail.com. That's for PayPal. If you want to PayPal us through salvationpreacher at gmail.com. Um, if you want to... Um, If you want to um, do that or you can mail something to us, that's at the, uh, the, I'll go to our page here so you can see all that. Old Paz Baptist Church, Pastor Jason Cooley, here's the address that you can send to there. If you'd like to send something, send it in my name or Old, pa Old Paz Baptist Church Trust, you know, that's, that's better because we... Old Paz Baptist Church is a legal entity. doesn't really exist like that, okay? We don't operate in that name. So anyway, um, there's always those things and and uh, you can do to help support the ministry. If anybody wants to say hi real quick, I think there was over 70 people on today. Praise the Lord for that. I'll play a song here real quick and give you a chance to say hi. And if it's your first time listening or you haven't said hi or any of that, uh, go ahead and type it in there if you can in the chat. And uh, we look forward to it. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. The trusting heart to Jesus clings, nor any ill forebodes. But at the cross of Calvary sings, praise God for lifted loads. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for oh, Jesus has lifted my load. The passing days bring many cares, fear not I hear him say. And when my fears are turned to... Hey, somebody said they moved to Minnesota. Where you at? Where'd you move to? Let's see. Where'd you move to? How far away are you from us? It'd be a blessing to meet you. That'd be great. How long have you been listening to us? To prayers, the bird and slip away. He tells me of my father's love and never slumbering I. My everlasting king above will all my needs supply. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. To the throne of grace I flee, I find the promise true. The mighty arms upholding me will bear my burdens too. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has 
has lifted my load Singing I go along life's road Praising the Lord, praising the Lord Singing I go along life's road For Jesus has lifted my load For Jesus has lifted my load All right, everybody. I wish I could stay longer, but I really got to get out of here. I... I got some other things to do. I'm sorry to hear about your Uncle Jim. Uh, Oh, he was healed of his terminal cancer. Well, praise the Lord. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. I read that wrong. That's great that he was. Praise God for that. Good deal. We'll definitely pray for your Father. In fact, let's do that now. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for uh, this time together with all the brethren and sisters of Christ here and those that may be listening that are not saved. Lord, we pray you'd save the one nearest to hell, and we say we pray that you'd uh, revive the backslider that uh, may be away from you. And Lord, we just pray for uh, Chainbreak's Father, Lord, in this time, and, and Lord, we just pray for healing for him and uh, that you'd just be with his heart and his life and and may the testimony of Christ continue in in their lives. And Lord, we pray, Father, also for Harvey, my cousin, Lord, who has cancer. We pray that you just erase and heal all that cancer in his body and take care of him there. Uh, We pray for others that are with child. I think of uh, Andrea and my wife, Lord. Please be with them and help them uh, through their pregnancies and keep them strong and healthy and safe. And, uh, and give smooth, natural births and, and just take care of them and meet their needs, Lord. And we pray for others, Lord. And we pray for uh, the person that said they, they don't live too far from us, Lord. We pray for them. We pray that they'd be able to, to come and, and uh, Lord, and come to the church. And, and uh, Lord, we just pray for that. We pray for your hand and uh, on our lives and our hearts. And just bless us today. Keep us all healthy and safe. Bring us back together online, Lord, that we could... Uh, be centered around the Word of God and grow thereby. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, Peter, yeah, sure. If you moved here, you could come preaching with us. Uh, That'd be fine if that's the way the Lord led you to do. Uh, From Florida to cold Minnesota, that'd be something. I think you live in Florida. Maybe you don't. I don't remember where you live. But uh, anyway, uh, we've had it happen. Um, Pure defense mushroom, I think. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, before I leave, the trolls had to come in. Um, Mr. Love and Mr. Jonathan had to come in and make a... And they're saying I'm cussing because I said black man in videos call people bitches. Now, that's not me cussing. That's me explaining. Isn't it amazing how foolish people are? Anyway, they can't destroy what God does. They just, they're like little, little gnats, little piss ants that just try to, try to um, annoy. Anyway, uh, but they can't. It doesn't matter. I got plenty of work to do. I don't have time to mess around with any of them. So we just keep going for the Lord. Anyway, praise the Lord. And I hope you all do well. I'm getting out of here. I got to get going. But uh, take care. Have a good weekend. And uh, we'll see you, Lord willing, on.